So now I want to uh, discuss the Mayer-Vietoris theorem, which is a method of calculating homology groups. It's uh, somewhat analogous to the uh, uh, Seifert van Kampen theorem that we use to uh, calculate uh, the pi 1 of the uh, uh, union of two subspaces. Um, but uh, in this case, we're going to calculate homology. So uh, the idea is we've got a simplicial complex K and two subcomplexes L and M, such that K is the union of L and M. And uh, we want to uh, have, we're going to have a theorem that relates the homology groups of uh, L and M and of L intersect M and of L union M, which is the same as K. Uh, <clears throat> so to describe what's going on here, we need to have names for the uh, inclusion maps between these, these various complexes. So uh, we've got the inclusion of L intersect M in L, we're calling I. Inclusion of L intersect M in M, we're calling J. Uh, L in K, we're calling K. M in K, we're calling little L. And uh, so these are all uh, uh, maps of simplicial complexes, just inclusions, and uh, they give us maps of homology groups, I lower star from the homology of L intersect M to the homology of L, and so on. And uh, this diagram, of course, is, is just, this is commutative. Uh, going this way around the diagram is the same as going that way around. It's just the inclusion of L intersect M in K. And so, uh, so K composed with I is the same as L composed with J, and uh, by a functorial property of homology, it follows that K star composed with I star is the same as L star composed with J star, and it's whole morphisms from uh, L intersect, uh, from the homology of L intersect M to the homology of K. <coughs> and uh, so now we want to uh, assemble these maps in a slightly different way. We're going to have the uh, homology of L intersect M here, and then the, here the direct sum of the two homologies of L and M, and here the homology of the union. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a map here that I've written kind of as ma in matrix form, I star and minus J star. So what this really means, it's the map that sends, you've got an element X here, and you send it to uh, the pair I star X and minus J star X. <clears throat> and then we've also got this map here, um, uh, which I've written in matrix form as K star L star, um, from HNM plus HNM to HNL union M. What this really means You've got an element here, which is a pair y, comma z, and you take k star y, and this gets sent to k star y plus l star z. <coughs> and, uh, and so if we do both of these things, you know, then you take a, um, take an element x here, and it goes to i star x and minus j star x, and then you apply this, you get uh, k star i star x minus l star j star x, but uh, k star i star is the same as l star j star, so that, that, uh, that composite is just giving us zero. <clears throat> and so it turns out that actually we can say a bit more than that. First, that firstly, that this uh, this little sequence here is exact. Uh, that the image of this i star minus j star is exactly the same as the kernel of the k star l star. <clears throat> but more than that, there exist these maps delta connecting maps from h n of l union m or h n k in other words down to h n minus one of l intersect m, such that the whole sequence here becomes exact, uh, with the, where you put the delta in kind of between the maps that we had already. Uh, <coughs> um, so we're going to prove this, of course, uh, this is just going to be a, an instance of the snake lemma. We have to set up the right uh, right chain complexes to apply the snake lemma to, and then this will come out as the consequence of the snake lemma. Before we do that, we'll just uh, mention how this uh, Maivitora sequence looks if we, we sort of unwrap it all. Okay, so it goes like this. You've got a HN of the intersection, HNL plus HNM, then P star uh, going to Hn L union M, and then you get a delta that curls around here, back down to Hn minus 1 L intersect M, then here's the sum, and then here's the homology of the union, and so on. And then it ends up here, you know, the H0 of L intersect M, H0 L plus H0 M, and then H0 of L union M, and then kind of the next term morally is 0, so because that's 0 and the thing's exact, that just means that this P star is going to be surjective. <clears throat> okay, so to prove it, um, we need three chain complexes. They're going to be like this. Where our U star is going to be just the chain complex for the intersection. Our W star is the chain complex for the union. And our V star is the chain sum of the chain complexes uh, for the two things. <clears throat> and then we're going to ma um, <clears throat> uh, define maps uh, F and G. So F goes from U star to V star, G from V star to W star. Uh, <clears throat> and... Uh, F is again i hash minus j hash, so it's the same kind of thing as we had before. 
you know, you've got an element X in U star, and then it gets sent by F to the pair uh, I, I hash X and minus J hash X. And G sends a pair Y comma Z to K hash Y plus L hash Z. And so the I hash and the J hash and the K hash and the L hash, those are certainly chain maps, and it follows easily from that that the F and the G are also chain maps. <coughs> <clears throat> so we want to claim that this sequence, uh, f and g, is a short exact sequence. Now, assuming that, then we can just use the snake lemma to get the long exact sequence that we want. And to see this, well, we're going to have to decompose everything into, into pieces. So we're going to um, define Pn to be the free abelian group on the n simplices of the intersection, L intersect m. So that's just the same thing as the uh, nth, uh, nth chain group for the complex L intersect m. But then we're going to define Qn to be the free abelian group on the n simplices of L that are not contained in M. And Rn, similarly, the free abelian group on the n simplices of M that are not also contained in L. So then this U star, U star is a chain complex for L intersect M, that's just the same thing as P star. Uh, <coughs> and our W star, that was the chain complex for L union M. So we can split that up into three pieces. I mean, you've got your n simplices in L union M, or some of them are actually contained in L intersect M. So that's your P star. And then some of them are, um, you know, I mean, all of them out there have to either be contained in L or contained in M. So if they're contained, if, if they're contained in L but not contained in M, then that's uh, Q. Uh, and if they're contained in M, not contained in L, that's the R. And if they're contained in both L and M, that's the P. So we see that the W star splits as the direct sum of these three groups. <clears throat> and uh, so the chain, similarly the chain complex for L, uh, you can split that up into two parts. That's uh, the n simplices in L. Well, you can uh, there are some of them that are contained in M, in which means that they definitely must be contained in L intersect M. So that's uh, that's your P. Uh, and then there's the ones um, that are contained in L but are not contained in M. That's your Q. So C star L is P star plus Q star. C star M is P star plus R star in the same sort of way. And uh, our V star, remember, V star was the chain complex for L plus the chain complex for M. Chain complex for L is the P star plus Q star. Chain complex for M is the P star plus R star. <coughs> okay, so uh, <coughs> so this kind of is kind of looking promising that uh, the V is uh, just, uh, I mean, if we ignore the sort of um, what the maps are, then you know the, the V is the direct sum of the of the U and the W. So that uh, looks good for having a short exact sequence. Um, but uh, we do need to actually kind of think about uh, what exactly these maps F and G are with respect to this decomposition. Um, so what about what's F? Well, F is uh, I hash and minus J hash. So the, your uh, I hash is just sending P to P, and your J, J minus J hash is sending P to minus P. And then this first P is kind of appearing in the C star L factor, which is here. And the second P is the part appearing in the C star M factor, which is here. So it's like f of p is p0 minus p0. <coughs> and similarly, what about g? Okay, I mean, so g was this uh, k hash and l hash thing. Um, so what's that? I mean, uh, the uh, uh, so with respect to this p star, q star, p star, r star, I mean, the, the two p stars, those are just kind of the same thing in the uh, l, l intersect m piece. And so... Uh, <coughs> um, so yeah, your, um, the, the p and the p prime get combined together, um, whereas uh, the, uh, the q and the r pieces are still separate, and they just get mapped to the q and the r there. So uh, you think about it a little bit, you see that this g is just look like like this g of p q p prime r is just p plus p prime q and r. Uh, and so in particular, you know, it could happen that p prime is zero. If we look at a special case where we take p prime to be zero, then g of p q zero r is just p q r. So uh, from this, you know, you see um, this any PQR is G of something, so G is surjective. And also we're claiming that F is injective, right? I mean, that's clear. If F of P is zero, then the, and then because the P is just sitting there, then P has to be zero. So uh, F's injective, G is surjective. Um, and then we want to claim that the image of F is the same as the kernel of G. So what's the kernel of G? It's a set of things uh, sent by G to zero. So it's a set of things P, Q, P prime R such that this uh, this thing here is zero. So the P plus P prime has to be zero, Q has to be zero, and the R has to be zero. So your P, Q, P prime R is of the form P zero minus P zero. Okay. Q and the R are zero, and the P prime is minus P. Okay. 
But uh, but then that just by uh, looking at the the formula for f, you see that this uh, this kernel of g that's just the same thing as the image of this map f here. So that means we've got a short exact sequence of uh, of chain uh, chain complexes and chain maps, and so by the uh, snake lemma we get a long exact sequence of homology groups. <coughs> uh, and uh, and so what is that long exact sequence? Well, it, I mean it, uh, it links the homology of u, homology of v, and the homology of w. But the homology of u uh, is just the homology of L intersect M, homology of V is homology of L plus the homology of M, homology of W is homology of L union M, uh, and that uh, that proves the Meyer Torus theorem. <coughs> I also want to discuss a slight variant on that, a so called truncated Meyer Torus uh, sequence. Um, so it it's kind of often happens that uh, all the complexes we're looking at are connected. Um, so in particular, but we actually we only really need the, the intersection L intersect M should be connected. Okay. Um, so supposing that's true, then we can uh, modify the Meyer Viatora sequence and just uh, get rid of all the H0 terms, replace them by zero, uh, and the claim is that that's still an exact sequence. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's often true as well that actually L and M are both connected, as well as L intersect M being connected. And uh, Further claim in this proposition that if uh, L, M, and L intersect M are all connected, then L union M is, is connected as well. <coughs> and uh, and from that we see, uh, we're going to see that the, all the H zero groups are isomorphic to Z. <coughs> um, so how do we prove this? Well, uh, uh, we pick a vertex uh, A in, uh, in in L intersect M, and uh, so. Uh, H zero of L intersect M, you know, we know that we've sh shown already that H zero of any complex is just the free abelian group uh, on the uh, path components. So, uh, you know, so A represents the only path component of L intersect M because it's connected. So H zero of L intersect M is free abelian group generated by A. <coughs> now, uh, remember, if we look at H zero L, then uh, that's that's again it's free abelian group uh, with uh, path components as a basis. And uh, I star of A is one of those basis elements, and uh, from that it's, it's clear that your I, z I star map from H zero L intersect M to H zero L is injective. And uh, from that it's uh, easy to see that the combined map here is also injective. And there's, uh, if, you say any, if this sends anything to zero, then I star must actually send it to zero, and I star is injective. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, let's look at the uh, tail end of the Meyer-Vitoris sequence. Okay, so we've got an H1, sum of the two H1s, then K star and L star to H1 of the union. Then we get the delta, then we get this H0 L intersect M, and then uh, the H0 L plus H0 M. <coughs> now this map here, we've mentioned, is, uh, is injective, so the kernel is zero. Um, but we know that the sequence is exact, so the, uh, the kernel of this map here is the same as the image of this map here. So the image of this map here must be zero. And if the image of delta is zero, that just means that delta has to be the zero homomorphism. <coughs> okay, so this map is zero. Um, so, uh, so the kernel of delta is the whole of this this H one L union M, and because uh, the, uh, but uh, so but the kernel of delta is going to be the same as the image of this K star L star because the sequence is exact. So the kernel of delta is this whole group. So the image of this K star L star is the whole group. So that means that K star L star is a surjective homomorphism. <coughs> uh, from that, it's clear. You know, if we look at this sequence here, you know this guy is surjective. There's nothing to say about uh, uh, exactness over here. It's all just kind of automatic. And then uh, you know, this, uh, what we've got here, the I star minus J star and the K star L star around here, that's just part of the original Meyer-Vitoris sequence, which you already know is exact. Um, so we see that this sequence is exact. And then, if we take the rest of the modified Meyer-Vitoris sequence, it's uh, it's just the same as the as the original unmodified one, and so that's also exact.